Welcome. Today we're going to look at the first aspect of what to assess and how to assess. We have looked already at why we assess and we also looked at certain elements of how to assess in earlier concepts. But when it comes to interdisciplinarity, what are the various facets that one could assess is what this particular element and this particular topic really looks at. We will be building on these as we go forward in trying to understand how to assess interdisciplinarity and 21st century skills uh, in addition to learning outcomes of a subject. So welcome to unit three, session two, activity four on how to assess. So if we begin with one element, have you thought about manholes, potholes, as we call them sometimes, the gutter? Uh, have you thought about the fact that we generally always have round shaped ones or sometimes rectangular ones, but we rarely have anything which is square in shape. Even if there are squares, then they are like in the left side, you would have something else that comes in, um, a shape that features, which just makes it more like a rhombus or a, a kind of not a sharp square one, but diagonals with a kind of padded rounded corners. Why do you think that is the case? That's the question that we can ask students. Are there square-shaped manholes in the world? Are they popular? Why do you think that everyone around the world, be it nature or be it man, decided that it is better to have round-shaped ones or roundish ones rather than have square-shaped ones or squarish ones? Think about it. You can pause the video right here and reflect on what are the kinds of skills that would be needed to try and even answer this question. What would you try and do to be able to answer this question? And that is what brings us to the aspect of how something as simple as asking a question could lead to certain skill sets, and activities that students could do that can be assessed for their 21st century skills. So what can we do? We can, of course, be looking at why there are not many squared manholes in the world. But what is it that the child should be doing to identify where can the child find this information from? What will our students try and do if they have to find this information? They would try and perhaps, perhaps search for information by asking different other sources. They may go to a builder, they may go to experts, they may go to some construction sites, they may ask people around them, teachers included, and friends, why do you think there aren't any many square manholes? They may search on the web, they may try and call up some other person. They may even look up books and other resources to try and find the sources of information to tell them why there might not be uh, square manholes. But they also have to understand whether it is authentic information, whether it is reliable information. They need to understand, should I go to a child to try and answer this question on square manholes versus round manholes? Should I go to an adult? Will all adults know this information? Will any adult's information be reliable? They need to understand, can all books and blogs and newspapers be reliable? Therefore, they learn something like media literacy. They learn something as digital literacy. They learn aspects of understanding critical thinking because they are trying to now figure out which is the truth and which is popular opinion. They would want to look at how to learn through this process. They are trying to understand how to find information, how to learn in that sense. 
What else could they do? They could also understand through all of these processes, we would be able to understand what we should assess about this child. What about these processes should we assess? We could look at the teamwork that they have. We could look at the fact that they need to understand how each one brings in pieces of information and collates it together and builds the ideas of why there aren't squared manholes, as many as there are round manholes or rectangular manholes. Actually, whether the answer is right or wrong is not important. What is important is what is the process they are following to arrive at the answer. Are they really able to analyze? Are they able to do surveys and then be able to identify whether how that survey is able to give them correct information? Are they able to build models to try and see why square manholes may or may not work? What happens to the lid if the square manhole is there? Can the lid, if it is twisted around, fall into the manhole? They may try and do experiments. They may even try to do uh, expert interviews. They may try all kinds of information sources and we can try and find out what are the processes that they are adopting. Through that, we can understand how well they collaborate with each other, how well they are able to communicate with each other. What are their critical thinking processes what is their media literacy? What is their digital literacy? What are their cultural literacy aspects? Whom do they go to to find information? So many aspects of the 21st century skills can be identified from here. Of course, even their creativity as if they build models or try and present information creatively, we can try and assess all of that. Every contribution of every child can be tracked, even by just asking them, what did you do? They could learn as they do this. The child also learns how to document contributions, how to designate roles, how to understand what is a team leader's job. Should we elect a team leader? How to elect a team leader? Cooperate with each other. How can we cooperate? How do we compromise? How do we negotiate? How do we communicate? They not only learn to find the answer, but they actually learn how to find the answer together and how to verify the answer, authenticate the answer, and track and document every process that they have taken. So that when you ask them, what did you do to find the answer? they're able to answer. And that is what we could try and do in terms of assessment. We don't have to necessarily arrive at the right one. Uh, so just by asking a simple question, are there squared manholes in the world? Why do you think that they may not be as popular? Why are there more round manholes? Asking such a simple question could lead to a process of finding, researching, understanding, and also verifying and communicating and documenting. It can lead to many other skills that the child has. Of course, there is also connection to science. There's connection to history, to look through the history of manholes and find out how were manholes there, what shapes were they. To look at geography, to understand if many other spaces have different kinds of manholes. To understand mathematics, to really look at what is the problem with squared lid manholes as opposed to rectangular lid manholes or roundish manholes. Why are squared manholes uh, not as prominent? Could it be something to do with geometric reasoning? There could be so many other ways. There is English as they try and communicate. There may be any language that they are trying to communicate. There could be economics as they try and find out not only what are the kinds of manholes, but also the fact that many manhole lids sometimes get stolen 
or that manhole lids have to be made of certain metals and maybe the history of the different kinds of materials that were used to create those manholes, lids. Also, the sociology of it, as they look at the fact that manholes had certain other repercussions, who would build the manhole, who would go into the manhole, who would clean the manhole, what are the repercussions? What about scavengers? What about the people who are traditionally considered outcasts because they are cleaners who clean manholes? There are so many elements of civics, of cleanliness, of other elements that could have come in as they were researching a very simple question as, are there square manholes in the world? Why do you think they are not as popular? Uh, if you have other ideas to share, and I'm sure you have very many, of such kinds of activities that could build interactivity, that could build uh, interdisciplinarity, that could really help us research, not just the learning outcomes of scholastic learning outcomes that are mapped to subjects that we teach, but also holistic outcomes, which are the 21st century skills as we talk about, it would be wonderful to have them shared by you. We would also learn from you. Do write in. The next activity that you would be looking at perhaps would be on um, you know, reading of other elements. You have seen in our course other kinds of uh, activities from Anand Niketan and the team mapping activity of how interdisciplinarity can be built in. We have other examples for you. But following that, there is a discussion and we would love to hear from you how you think there could be more activities built by asking a simple question.